Saudi Arabia is making a billion dollars a day. What are they spending on? Golf and motor oil. What else? Coming up here in the jog. Hi folks, Alex Klingelhafer here with Existential Wealth Advisors. It is 829 here in the middle part of the country on Monday. It is August 1st. Here's your morning jog around the economic headlines of the world. Starting off in Odessa, a grain ship now headed for Lebanon. It's the first grain ship since the start of the Russia-Ukraine war back in February. Of course, we've talked about this being a large concern. Hey, if Grain cannot get out of Odessa, cannot get out of Europe's bread basket. What will that mean for hunger around the world? It could be truly devastating. It does look like this is the first of many ships good on the powers that be in Russia and Ukraine for allowing the world to be fed out of what is really one of the most turbulent places in the world right now. And certainly on a go forward basis, let's hope it continues Saudi. Ramco going to buy Valvoline's products arm. Looks like it's going to be about $2.6 billion. Of course, if you look at the big picture, Saudi Ramco, that's not a lot of money to them. At $100 oil, their cost is something like $8 to $12, somewhere in there. No one really knows. They're making at 11 million barrels a day, which is a, a new high for a couple of years. They're making about a billion dollars a day. So they can buy Valvoline's products division in two days. Yeah, that's quite a bit of cash flow and investment. Of course, they're sports washing their country. We've seen a lot talked about the Live Golf Tour. Let's take a step back and think about it here. No one in the US, it seems like, wants to invest in traditional energy, meaning hydrocarbons, oil, gas, that sort of thing. What happens when all of the US assets, including the largest refinery in the US in Port Arthur, Texas, are owned by the Saudis, are owned by foreign interests, if you have geopolitical tensions, is that going to bode well for the old US of A? Certainly doesn't seem to be the case. US investors, perhaps we need to, you know, man up a little bit, own some of these industries that are so disparaged despite our ESG misgivings because of energy independence. That used to be a hot word during the Bush administration. It hasn't been for quite some time. Last but not least, before we head you off to a nice Monday, Nikola going to buy Romeo Power in $144 million deal. You can read the headline just like I can. Romeo Power is Nikola's biggest energy provider. Nikola, remember, you know, may have sort of misled investors by having a truck roll down a hill and making it look like it was moving. Yeah, that wasn't so great. They are going to produce somewhere between 300 and 500 electric semis. Of course, semis are the golden goose when it comes to electrification of transportation because if you want high torque and you want things that are okay with being heavy, semis are, are what you have, right? They're, they're really a good application of EV technology. Of course, neither of these two things have been a good investment. They've been terrible investments. Romeo's down, oh gosh, 80 plus percent since its uh, SPAC IPO a couple of uh, years ago. Uh, Nikola, the same place, just been a terrible burning of investor capital. Let's just go back to what we used to do. How do businesses make money? Do they have free cash flow? Use that to value companies. It tends to work out in the long term. Sure, you miss out on a couple lottery tickets, but you also miss out on the permanent destruction of your capital in Romeo and in Nikola. If you want some additional info throughout the day, feel free to find me on the internet. I'm out there. Until then, hope you and your family have a really good rest of your Monday. I am out.